Okay, here we are with the student athletes from Tennessee, Josiah Jordan James and Santiago Viscovi. How did I do? That's right. Good. BN, BN. All right. Okay, first question to our right. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. For, for both you guys, you've been with Coach for, for so long. Does the fact that he's playing Texas tomorrow, does that mean anything to you guys, or is it just you know because of his history, or is it just another game in between the Sweet 16? I mean, for Coach, he definitely doesn't make it bigger than it is. You know, he has no hard feelings towards that university. But, you know, for us, we kind of take it upon ourselves to, you know, make things right with him because we know that this is a huge game for him, even though he doesn't want it to be. Uh, we want to come out with a victory. And obviously, in this time, part of the season, it's win or go home. And, you know, obviously, they're just another team in the way. But, you know, the UT versus UT rivalry is something that's new and we're excited about and we love winning. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, same thing Joe said. Uh, we know that at this point of the year, you either win or go home. Uh, Texas is just another opponent that we have in front. Uh, and I think we're going to need everybody uh, like we had last game where everybody played hard every second they stepped on the court. And we're going to need that out of every single person. Hey, for both of y'all, uh, <laughs> Triple J. Josiah, I'm sorry, and, All good. Santi I like the and Santiago. Um, when you got when you guys look at what happened in, in Indianapolis two years ago, where you had an opportunity to advance, do you do y'all two guys that have kind of been around the program? Do you look back at that those kind of moments and try to teach the current guys that are on the roster? You know, maybe what y'all did wrong back then compared to what you could do right now. We lost in Michigan. Um, I would think. You know, you try to learn a lot from losses, especially in settings like this. But, you know, I feel like everybody in that locker room knows what's at stake and knows the sense of urgency we have to play with. And, you know, I'm proud of the way we came out the last 40 minutes. And I think that I know for a fact that if we come out with that sense of urgency, that sense of aggressiveness uh, for 40 minutes, we'll put ourselves in a very good position to win. But uh, it really, you know, it helps having that experience, even though we lost. Experience is always the best teacher. And, you know, we try to share that experience with other guys, but I feel like everybody from top to bottom is locked in. Yeah, and big, uh, most important than that, uh, I think, because that game, of course, we lost. Uh, we can learn a lot from that. But it was two years ago. Uh, I think the biggest teacher at this point uh, probably is the two games, the two last games that we had against Kentucky and at the SEC tournament, especially the SEC tournament one, because uh, it gave us a feeling that uh, we definitely don't want to feel anymore. Uh, if we feel that again, it means our season is over. And just to understand, like Joe was saying, the sense of urgency that we're going to play with. And I think it's easier to look back to those games that happened recently and where everybody, everybody was involved, even though we can tell them about what happened two years ago. I think that's the biggest teacher that we're going to have. Ryan Sylvia, Rivals.com. I'm sure there's a lot of positive takeaways from the game yesterday, but what were some of the things the coaches were telling you guys that need to be improved? I would just say taking care of the ball. Um, and, you know, obviously going against a team like Texas, they score a lot in transition. They get a lot of points off turnovers. So just being better with uh, taking care of the ball and then defensive rebounding, you know, just having holding teams to one possession. So those two aspects for sure. San Diego. Uh, yeah, same thing, taking care of the ball, uh, playing hard on defense like we did. And they're a very physical team, so uh, just got to play hard on both ends of the floor and then box out and then go on the offensive rebound. Steve Lehman, News Channel 5 in Nashville. You guys have been around for what has been maybe the best stretch of Tennessee basketball all time. How important would it for you two, as you kind of wrap this up, to one, get the next step of getting back to a second straight Sweet 16 tomorrow, but I know you have higher goals in mind and to finish it off that way. Yeah, our goal when we came together in the summer, we got everybody together for our first team meeting. We talked about making history, and we knew that we had a collective guys, a collective group that 
you know, could be a part of it. And we've worked endlessly and tirelessly, tirelessly to get to this point. But, you know, the, the buck doesn't stop here. We want bigger and better things, and we want to leave this place better than we found it. You know, we've had a lot of success and a lot of wins, but, you know, this time right in front of us is the most important. And we know that the next 40 minutes could be our last 40 minutes if we don't come out with a sense of urgency. But we just got to take it one game at a time. And I know if we do that and come in with the right mindset that we can make history in this program. Same thing. Uh, Joe nailed it. But I'll let him start answering first. No. Uh, but yeah, just gotta come come out with that sense of urgency. Uh, know that this is the most fun part of the year. Uh, and we just gotta play with that chip on our shoulder uh, that we know we can do. And just go out and get give all our effort uh, every second on the court. I think every guy on the last game uh, did that. Everybody that stepped on the court played really hard and did what they were supposed to. So if we keep doing that, I think we're going to put ourselves in a great position to win. Josiah, right here, back in the middle. Um, being at Tennessee for how long that, that you have been there and with Rick Barnes, it, it, did looking back on it now, maybe your first year, first semester at Tennessee, do you think you guys kind of laid a foundation when it comes to getting the basketball program kind of right in that back in that right direction, even when Rick was hired at Tennessee and then you arrived when you did, it just seemed like it stabilized the program a little bit. Can you talk about those those early years that you were there compared to where you are now? Yeah, I'm not sure how the program did when, like prior to Coach Barnes and you know his first couple of years. I just know my time there for my last five years. And I can't really say it was me and Santi solely. We, we had leaders of like Jordan Bowden, Lamonte Turner, John Fulkerson, Eve Pons, guys who were on that 2018, 2019 team who did some really good things and had a really talented group. And so they just, you know, were great leaders for us. And, you know, once those guys left, they, the, the, weight, the weight was on our shoulders as leaders. And I think we've done a great job of upholding the standard and having Tennessee be the standard of SEC basketball. And, you know, in this tournament, we're trying to make Tennessee the standard of all college basketball and, you know, trying to be the last team standing. We also have some people on Zoom. If you have a question on Zoom, use the uh, raise hand function. We'll get it to you. Anybody else here in the room with a question? I guess I'll follow up a little bit to the earlier question is, how much did you guys hear after last week? Uh, for all your wins, people talking about, oh, they haven't done it in March the way they want to, and then last week to lose on Friday. Do you guys take that personally? To any degree? First of all, uh, you got to understand once you get in a position like we are, where there's a lot of eyes watching you, uh, there's a lot of that stuff that you got to kind of channel it out. Uh, I don't think any of our guys are paying attention to what other people are saying. Uh, you're always going to have uh, both ends, you know, be with our going to go against you, people are going to go with you. and. We know what we're here to do. Uh, I think the team has prepared the best way we can. And I think it's shown the first game we played yesterday. And we just got to keep it rolling now. Uh, at the end of the day, we're the ones on the court. Uh, and yeah, we just got to keep playing hard like we're doing. Was that for me too? Yeah, good. Um, our, our motto, you know, since this tournament has started and you kind of leading up to the SEC tournament is it's just us and we don't, you know, it's hard to, but we're, we're trying our best to block out all the outside noise. Obviously, we know that we haven't had the success that we've wanted to in the past years. And, you know, the only way we can fix it is by accepting the challenge that we have in front of us and playing the, the next 40 minutes like it's the championship game. And so, obviously, would we have wanted to do better in past tournaments? Obviously, that's 100%. But all we can do is accept the challenge that we have now and try to, to be our best in this moment. Just how you just talked about that motto, it's just us. Can you just expand on what that entails? Yeah, everybody um, in the locker room from top to bottom, you know, who's been with us throughout in our organization is all we need. Coach has, has talked about it from day one. Everybody in that locker room, we have everything that we need to, to be successful and be the last team standing. And so just relying on each other, uh, having a selfless attitude and competing on a day to day basis, you know, relying on our daily habits that have, you know, we started in the summertime that we've relied on to get to this point in the season, 
we don't have to come to this tournament and beat anybody that we're not and try to do things that we haven't done up until this point. We're one of the best teams, if not the best teams in the country, and we've gotten that way by doing what we do and relying on the group that we have. Santiago, what does that mean to you, just us? Same thing Josiah just said. Tyler Wombles, Daily Times. For either of you, Santa, you mentioned Texas being a physical team. How physical do you expect this game to be tomorrow? Do you expect it to be a very physical game? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we This is going to be the third time we play him uh, in three years. So uh, we kind of know each other at this point. And yeah, they're a team that plays really hard. They're a very talented team. Got to give them a lot of credit. Uh, they're going to play hard. We know, we know it's going to be a physical battle. And uh, I don't have any doubt any of our guys are gonna not going to be up to the standard. I think everybody's going to do their job. Uh, we're a physical team as well, so uh, it's going to come down to the wires, and I think both teams are going to be really physical tomorrow. I think, you know, going into the game, they're going to know what we're going to run. We're going to know what they're going to run. It's not going to come down to X's and O's, but it's going to be, it's going to come down to who's the more physical team. Like Santi said, we played them the last three years straight. And if you go back to those games where they won at Texas, they were more physical for the majority of the game and they won. Go back to the game last year in Knoxville, we were more physical from start to finish and we were able to pull out the victory. So we know that, you know, it's, it doesn't come down to game plan. It just comes down to toughness and physicality in the end. Anyone else? Okay, thanks. Good job, guys. Turn around.
and they feel like if you pass by, you stop by. Yeah. Time's your reservation. <laughs> okay, here we go. Long time no see. Okay, questions. Raise your hand. Let's get the handheld mic to you. Who has the first question? Coach, I, I, right here. I, I know it's going back a while, but I, I just wanted to ask, when you, when you got to Tennessee, um, you know, from Texas in those first couple of years that you were with the program, how would you characterize it? Do you, do you feel like it was a stabilization of the Tennessee Athletic Department compared to where things maybe are now, uh, you know, with the number of different ADs and where the football program was and the basketball program, do you feel like you kind of set a foundation of where things maybe are now? Not trying to put it all on your yeah. back, but no, you know what? Uh, Dave Hart hired me. Dave Hart interviewed me uh, back in 19, I think 85 or 86, when I was an assistant at Ohio State and. He was an associate AD at East Carolina, getting ready to become the AD. And we had known each other through that, and then me in the ACC. And, and actually, before the final you know, week or so I was at Texas, you know, we had started talking a little bit indirectly. And, and uh, so Dave, uh, when he hired me, he said, uh, we really need to build a program. He said, we've had good teams here. We've got a great tradition, but we need, we're looking for stability. We're looking for uh, consistency. And, and, uh, you know, um, I, I can tell you our first year there, we, we struggled, but our fan base, and I, I grew up, you know, three hours from Knoxville, and I had no idea the support that the volunteers got, not, and not only basketball, but football, uh, every sport. It, it's, it's really, truly amazing. I've never been around a fan base like what we have. And, um, uh, but it, that was kind of my marching orders, you know, to do that. And, so we, uh, we set out to do that. We, we targeted some young guys that we wanted to go after and try to bring in five or six guys that we were going to build around. And we were able to do that and, and got, got it going. And then, you know, as you mentioned, there's been some uh, different uh, ADs in and out one, one, you know, once Dave stepped away from it. But this administration is the best I've ever been around when you think about uh, Randy Boyd as our president of our UT system. And, Dondi Plowman is just, I've never been around anybody on campus to, that has led the way she has. And Danny White uh, has been probably the first, well, he was, the, I think, the first AD hired by the president and the chancellor. And what he has done in the time that he's done it is, uh, it's, it's, uh, you talk about a makeover. It's amazing what he's done and, the, and what he's done for every sport. I mean, he says, hey, we want to be one of the best in the country. And he said, I got to do my job to get the budget where it needs to be, facilities and all that. And they have worked night and day to do that. And uh, Tennessee is just, I'm telling you, it's a special place. It really is. And I said it last night, I've been blessed from the time I've gotten there. And, uh, but it's just all around from a university standpoint. I can't imagine there's a better place in the country right now to be associated with. Joe Wright. 
uh, Josh Newman, LoneStarLive.com. Um, Rick, you alluded to this last night. Rodney Terry was just talking about it. If you think back to like 2001, 2002, Rodney was at UNC Wilmington. Kelvin Sampson offers him a job at Oklahoma. He turns it down, and he said that that was at the advice of Frank Haith. Mm -hmm. What do you remember of, of that situation and that time when you were wanting to bring Rodney on? Well, the one thing I've always done uh, since I've – from the time I've been able to – be head coach, I've always relied on, on my assistant coaches to help hire who we hire because I think the chemistry of the staff is certainly one of the most important things. And, uh, you know, Frank had been with me and, you know, uh, I, I had known Frank and uh, he uh, was talking about Rodney. He, you know, he had, they were friends and he just had always talked and said, hey, if we ever get a chance to hire someone, a young guy that he said I think is really, really good is Rodney. and. And, uh, but I do remember that Frank told me that he, and Frank did ask me what would happen if Rodney took the Oklahoma job. And I just said, uh, out of my relationship and my respect for Kelvin, Kelvin and I have known each other forever. I said, I wouldn't do that just because of, and it, uh, it and that was just the way I thought at that time. And, uh, but then a year later we had his opening and, and Rodney was the, the only guy we really talked to about and, and hired him. West Rucker with 24-7 Sports. Rick, I know last season, obviously, y'all showed you could make a run in this tournament without Zakai when, when he was injured. But with him back now controlling things the way that he does, how much more security does that give you as a coach, you know, mentally going into games in this tournament? Well, Z has been such a huge part of our – I mean, I've said it many times. We recruited him. We thought we were going to redshirt him. And – after two days, we thought we maybe should redshirt Kennedy. And uh, I mean, from the time he walked on campus, we had no idea that we knew he had been good that last week of uh, at the Peach Jam, and we really had no idea he was going to do that. But his DNA uh, has impacted our program more than any player since we've been at Tennessee, and maybe one of the more, maybe anybody I've coached. I mean, what he does and what you see him do out there, he's doing it every day in practice, but. Uh, yeah, when you got a guy that you know that's going to play like that and give it to you every night, and he's going to be a guy that his teammates totally respect. It, it, you know, I guess as a coach going into the game, the biggest thing is you're hoping he doesn't get in foul trouble, he doesn't get hurt because uh, he means so much to us. Hey, Rick Gene Wong, the Washington Post. Great to see you again. Good to see um, you. Even though you're on different parts of the bracket, I wanted to ask you about your friendship with with Tommy Zo. Um, how it's grown over the years, and specifically, if you recall, what would you recall about your trip to Kuwait together um, for Hoops for Troops? Tom mentioned you guys had a lot of time to bond on the plane ride over. Well, Tom is really a, in, in this business, you know, we're kind of the same era, and Tom is a, we met in uh, Columbus, Ohio, when he was an assistant at Michigan State, and I was an assistant at uh, Ohio State, and uh, since that time, I mean, we and then we went on the trip, and that was a great trip for so many of us. I mean, going over there, uh, you know, we all loved it. I mean, it was you, you talk about coaching. How we had teams, and we we're trying to win it uh, as much as we possibly could. But I remember that was the first time in Ohio. The next time I saw Tom, we were in Detroit, and I'd watched a high school game in Detroit. Then I went over to watch this young guy play, and uh, Tom walked in with Coach uh, with Judd Heathcote, and I'm watching this guy and he's shooting some air balls and I don't even know if Tom remembers this, but I kept hearing Judd say, you got me here seeing this guy and I'm watching this guy and he makes a couple threes and he shoots another air ball and I'll never forget Judd Heathcote looked at me and he said, if you bring Gary Williams up here, he will fire you. And so I go back and tell Gary, Gary said, what do you think about the kid? And I told him, he said, well, I'm not going to go see him play. And I didn't realize until years later that I was set up because it was Steve Smith. And uh, so Judd and Tom, one of them set me up, you know, and, uh, but I did learn a lesson not to listen to other people. But, uh, but Tom is, uh, you know, we played uh, the last two years in a, in a inter, you know, close scrimmage and we played the exhibition game this year for the Maui Relief Fund. He, he I mean, he, he loves it. I mean, and uh, you can't help but be around him and he, he, he cares so much about the game. And, uh, but our friendship has, has been there for a long time and I think it always will be. Coach Steve Reed from the Associated Press. Uh, well, so I, I know when the brackets come out, you're not supposed to look ahead, but it's human nature that you do. And when you see Texas in your path, 
Uh, what do you do? I mean, do you roll your eyes like, I'd rather it be somebody else, I mean, because of the connections there? Or, or what goes through your mind when, when you see them potentially in your path to, uh, to the Final Four? Well, I will tell you this. When the bracket came out, uh, honestly, all I looked at was St. Pete. I, I tell our team that as soon as the meeting's over with, we go in and we talk about this. It's a four-team tournament here in Charlotte. And that's, uh, I, again, I said it last night, I have yet to look at the full bracket. Uh, but for some reason, uh, when our number came up, I'm like, will it be Clemson or will it be Texas? And uh, I don't know if they do that intentionally. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's always uh, tough playing people that you know, that know you. I mean, we, we know each other. I mean, there's not going to be a lot of secrets now. We, we, we've been around each other, we, all of us. And you look at his staff, I mean, there's a lot of guys on that staff that have been a big part of my career that, you know, I'm just blessed that uh, I was able to spend that time with him. But I think in all honesty, do you do you want to ha match up with uh, your friends? Like talking about Tom, I mean, I, I don't particularly look forward to that. Even though we didn't work together, we've known each other longer than I've known anybody on that staff, and I don't look forward to it. But, you know, we all know we have a job to do. And uh, when we toss it up, uh, we're going to try to do what we do, and that's try to win a basketball game. Back right. Thanks. Uh, Joe Rachel from The Athletic. Rick, uh, just wondering if you've been able to watch or enjoy at all what DJ Burns has been doing lately with NC State, and also just what you remember from you know, his time in your program. Well, one, he's got a wonderful family. And, you know, we obviously we thought DJ could be a player, and um, there's no doubt or he, we wouldn't have offered him a scholarship when we did. And, you know, if you really want to see DJ, you should get with my uh, strength and conditioning coach. He has a he has a uh, picture on his phone when he left Tennessee. You wouldn't recognize him. And uh, but DJ, uh, just like he does now in practice, you know he could score. Got great hands. Knew how to get the ball where he wanted to do it. Uh, and I think that uh, you know one thing that I really respect about DJ, even when he left, he would often send texts back to people just saying how much. He learned while he was at Tennessee, and he understands more now than he did then, which happens. It, it really does. And he, um, uh, when he left, went to Winthrop, you know, I think he got some great people around him. And, again, he's got a wonderful family. And, but, no, I'm not surprised because the guy knows how to score the basketball. And uh, he knows it as, as whether you want to say he's in shape or out of shape, he knows what he's doing when he's out there, and he knows how to get around and, and be effective. And, um, so I'm, I'm not really surprised by it. Back left. Ryan Shumpert, RTI, just how comforting is it entering a game like this to have Jemai and Zakai on the defensive end when you're going to face two really talented guards on the other side? Well, again, we're going to have to – it'll be more than those guys. I mean, they, they have some explosion there that uh, uh, they, they uh, certainly Max can get going. But uh, you know, we recruited Tyrese and – he, uh, we know what he's capable of, obviously, but Dylan DeSouss was in our league for a little bit and, and uh, recruited Dylan. And so we, we know their personnel, uh, obviously. And, and, um, but it, it's, they, 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 they're going to point, it's going to be a very, they're going to play extremely hard. I expect them to be out there just like they did last night. They did a great job of um, really forcing their physicality, I thought, on, on Colorado State. And I expect pretty much the same thing. And, and um, so we'll have to be ready and have a number of different guys uh, that can try to guard those guys. Sure, right. Coach uh, Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Coach, you guys are so detailed in your scouts in the regular season. When you get to this time of the year with the quick turnarounds, how much can you really get into the details versus how much you just try to be the best version of yourself? Well, you know, we, we've, I think they would say the same thing. that They, had, they probably have seen a lot of stuff that we've seen. And, and we do some similar some similar things. I mean, some things that we've used in the past. Rodney does, and and uh, so some of it, you know, you'll be familiar with. But it, we, we, I mean, we we have today, and I think this time the biggest thing you want you want your guys as fresh as you can keep them, and both mentally and physically, and you want to obviously make sure that everybody's healthy. So, uh, but we'll 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 have time. It's different in terms of you know uh, maybe the speed that you would normally work with, getting ready. You won't do that as much because again you want you want to them to be as fresh as they can come, come game time. But we'll, we'll get it covered. You know, we started on them today like we normally will with whoever we played, and we'll have all day today to do what we need to do and what we always do, and then we'll have tomorrow to do the same thing. 
Steve Lehman, News Channel 5 in Nashville. Rick, both Santi and Josiah just spoke about the importance of being aggressive and physical in every game, but especially in this game against Texas. Are those the two biggest keys you look for when a game starts to see if your team has it and brought it that day, if they live up to those two areas? Well, I think this, the first four minutes of games are extremely important, and I think that you do, you know, coaches, when we start, we're all sitting around thinking, are we going to be ready mentally, physically? Are we going to shoot the ball well, all that? You know, Tom and I actually were talking a little bit uh, this morning, he made a great comment. He said, you know, there's nights when people don't think you play well, you play really well, but you don't shoot well. And there's nights when you shoot well that you don't play real well. but you know, shooting makes up for a multitude of sins sometimes. But uh, at the start of the game, you're, you're looking for the details because you know early in the game what you've talked about and you want to make sure. But th with that said, you've got to be prepared for them to come with something else, a little tweak here or there. But you want to see your players on the edge. You want to see them locked into the details that you've talked about and, and uh, know that uh, I think this time of year we all have a pretty good idea of what you better expect. If you don't, you won't be here very long. Any other questions? Yeah. Thanks. You mentioned Zakai, the DNA a lot with, with Zakai. What does that look like? We see the things on the court, but what does that look like off the court and, you know, in the locker room, the bus, things like that? How does that translate to the team? Well, what you see on the court is what we see on the court every day. I mean, he, he's, he's going to go at it. I mean, just he's, he's no different. That's why I think he's consistent because he, he does it every day and um, his teammates they love him because of I mean that's hard to do I mean it's, you talk about mental toughness to be able to bring it every day and do what he does and uh, he's fearless uh, I think he's been through a lot more stuff difficulty things off the court in his life that uh, more so than anything on the court and I think he uh, takes nothing for granted he's he's, a, he's always been a fighter you talk to his mom and from the time he was small, you know, he he didn't run from it. He embraced it. He, he's uh, he's fearless, and uh, he's high, really competitive. And and one of his biggest faults is when he, when he's not going well, he's too hard on himself. I mean, he really expects it. And if you watch this, uh, like if you were at uh, tomorrow, we have a shoot around, or today at the end, I can assure you, when we're done, he will be one of the last guys that will still be there shooting. Uh, he's a guy that's going to come back, put his time in. If you watched how he went through his rehabilitation from a year ago to get his knee right, tells you a lot about him too because he, he thought he was, could play two months before they let him play. And it's just his mental makeup. And uh, it's infectious. I think it has rubbed off some guys. And, uh, uh, he's again, he has meant more to this program than people can't even imagine because he's talking about the little things in the locker room and all that. I think when he walks in the locker room, He's the same every day. He's, and one of the great things about him is he is consistent. I've never seen him in a bad mood other than when he gets mad at himself. I've learned how to, you know, tweak him a little bit to where he'll get mad at me. And, uh, but uh, I, love, I love the guy. I don't know what it would be like now not having him because he's been such an important part of our team. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, guys.